Hey guys. Hey everyone. I know this is new. We are going live with my husband, Steven Dela Cruz. How's it going? So I'm so excited you guys are here watching. Um, so we're going to try to do this YouTube live together. Uh, I know we were recording it before, but this is going to be our first live and hopefully more in the future. And Let's turn it down a little bit so it's not like you have like, no clothes oh, on. okay. Because <laughs> she has clothes on. Yeah. So uh, we actually want to talk about uh, Valentine's just happened. And I know you guys are like, okay, Valentine's happened. And so I thought... For married couples, I thought this would be great. Or for single people that want to get married in the future, um, I want to talk about marriage. And what is it like that my husband is married to a porn star? <laughs> and um, how do you keep a marriage strong in that kind of scenario? And so we want to give a little tidbits about our marriage and what we feel like really helped us. Mm -hmm. And um, I know my husband was so sweet on Valentine's Day. He took me out to lunch. I was absolutely stuffed. And then later we had like a little... With church. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> church. And, then, and then a couple days later we were on a trip. Yes. Yeah. And so I know... Um, yes. Hey. Yes. Well, I'm so glad that you will be interested in hearing about this. God bless you too. You, Dana, thank you for joining. Um, and so pretty much uh, what we actually have done because we're both like goal oriented, driven in our industries. Um, my husband is a life coach and a business coach and he is one of the hardest working people. And he's constantly like having a busy life. Myself, as you know, I am constantly working. Um, and so how do two peer people who are extremely focused on their work, how can they have a healthy marriage? And not only that, but on top of that, uh, doing the industry work that I do. So right there, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> there it seems like it the could be- yes. Yeah, it seems like there could be a lot of obstacles. <laughs> But um, we have been married for 11 years. Yes. Uh, this June will be 12. Hey, Willie. Thanks for joining. Um, and so we've been together dating fully 15 years. Um, we've been together. So how does that work? So we are going to give you some of the, the secrets that actually helped us uh, get to where we are today. And I can definitely say... The longer that we've been married, the more I have actually fallen deeper in love with my husband. Oh. <laughs> I'm a girl, so I do a little like, girly stuff. <laughs> um, and so we're going to talk about that today. And if you guys have any questions, please comment. This is a perfect time to comment to get an instant response for any questions That's you true. might have. And so if you guys don't know, the first time I met my husband was actually in Bible school. And the first, I just had this like weird feeling come over me and I just blurted out, you're going to be my best friend. <laughs> I was actually weirded out. But I was like, but you're hot. So, okay, let's be friends. Yeah, let's be best friends. And so um, two weeks later down the road, we just kind of knew we wanted to pursue more than just a friendship. And we started dating and we had this in mind that we were actually going to get married. Yeah. Um, so after, because we're Asian and we have Asian parents, our parents said, not until you're done with college. <laughs> so we did a uh, date for four years, yeah. graduated. And uh, a month after we graduated, we had a wedding date. That's <laughs> and true. Got married. That's true. <laughs> so that was fun. So let's see here, um, what, let's talk about our marriage. Okay. Let's do this. And again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask questions. Best time right now. So um, we both talked about what were some of the things that we felt helped us. I would say uh, communication. For sure. Probably one of the keys. Um, I know for me, it was really hard for me to communicate because um, I kind of grew up in a family where I had to be 
like really hush hush. I couldn't really express my emotions. And right. Stephen actually grew up in a family where it's like if there's a problem, there is a family meeting and everyone talks about it. Everyone <laughs> has to talk about it. And so this was really like, I would say it was really difficult because he would say, what's wrong? I say nothing. But obviously, it's like, nothing, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> right, and I was like, no, we're talking about it. And she was definitely very stubborn and not wanting to talk about it. So that was, that was definitely very challenging at first, trying to, I wanted to talk about it. She didn't. Yes. She wanted to let, let it go. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Like, no, let's stay awake. Let's keep yeah. talking. She wanted to go away and say, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow later. Like, no. So it was like, yeah, it was definitely <laughs> challenging. Yeah, so um, I would say... It's still a somewhat challenge, but I'm still learning to be better about communication. And I think um, just us communicating, especially in the industry that I'm in, actually helped us learn to have a lot more trust in each other. Mm. And you need that in a marriage. It's, and you need that in a marriage, and you need that more in, an, in a marriage like this. Right. And so trust is definitely the key and how you earn that trust is communication. Right. Um, so that's one key. Another key is, I would say, constant forgiveness. For, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She always has to forgive me. So a lot of times, so here's the thing. There's personality traits, right? Yeah. There's the red, green, blue, yellow. The red is a very type A personality. So that's go-getter, my way, the highway, I'm the leader, you're the follower. That's red. Yellow is very submissive, uh, supportive, loving, caring, s sensitive. Uh, I want to make sure everyone's okay. Then the green is analytical. They're, they think a lot. They like things planned out. They're very uh, methodical. They have calendars, dates, times, all that's important. <laughs> facts, I have to give them facts. And then the blue is spontaneous. Go, uh, wanna go to Vegas? Let's go right now. Let's, let's, like, there's no thinking ifs, buts about it. It's just very spontaneous. So everyone has two predominant, everyone has a little bit of everything, but everyone has two predominant colors. Hers is a yellow green. Yes. So sensitive, supportive, analytical. Um, oh, you're, that's you? Which one, what colors are you addicted? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm very sensitive and emotional, but at the same time, I'm very green that I'm so, by I plan everything. <laughs> right. I like, I'm like the planner. She You're is. spontaneous addicted? Ah, awesome. Well, my husband is spontaneous. Very spontaneous. <laughs> We're like, I will plan. That's the reason why we haven't been doing YouTubes or, uh, oh, yeah. or podcasts because She'll say, okay, 10 o'clock Tuesday, we'll do a podcast. And I'll text, she'll text me, where are you at? Sorry, I'm at the mall right now, just spontaneously. <laughs> like, I'm horrible, horrible with calendars and dates. I'm horrible with it. I admit it, that's my weakness. Um, but she's like really methodical on that. Like, no, you said 10 o'clock, you lied to me, you're not here at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know what, maybe we should do a podcast right now. So now it's very sporadic. So these little uh, YouTube lives, whatever we're doing now, will be very spontaneous because of that reason. <laughs> and so um, I'm, I am a red, blue, very spontaneous, but I'm also very my way, the highway. Yes. Uh, and direct. And direct, yes. yes. A great leader though. Great leader. <laughs> and so now that's one of the challenges we had was me being such a red, very direct, her being a yellow, very supportive. So it was it, at some point, or, or, or even today, it, sometimes it seems like a lot more one-way communication. This is yeah. what I want. This is what we're doing. And she goes, okay. <laughs> so so we're still working that out, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Like, we're still working that out <laughs> for me to be more sensitive to her wants and desires. But, you know, she's being a lot more better communicating. Um, but sometimes a little until the very last moment she's oh, boiling. Yeah. She's like, I am so pissed <laughs> off. Can we talk? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I do not appreciate. But she's not, she's not mean about it. She's like, I don't appreciate when this, 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 this. I don't like it when this. And she's very sweet about it. And so, but, but still, it's like she lets it boil up inside of her because she's a yellow. Doesn't let confrontation. Yeah. But if it boils so much in her, she'll let it out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so um, with our difference, we are complete opposite people. and But opposite is not a negative thing. It's actually a really positive thing 
because his weaknesses are my strengths and my weaknesses are his strengths. So taking that, it's like yin and yang and we put it together, we are able to move forward and make things happen. Uh, when, when I need to fulfill a place, I do it. And when he needs his strength, he does it. So it's really awesome to have that. But um, when we talk about having forgiveness, constant forgiveness, we have to do that, especially with our different personality traits. Um, there are things that I'm going to do that's going to annoy him. <laughs> and there are things that he's going to do that it's going to annoy me too. <laughs> so we've learned that through our humanness and our faults, um, it's just learning to constantly forgive. Because here's the thing, the worst thing to do is be in a marriage where you don't have forgiveness for towards the other person. If that's the case, then it's really hard to survive. So just learning that we're both human. Um, you said something about, you talked, you said a long time ago not to have expectations. Right. You want to talk about that and in like the concept of like forgiveness? Yes. So a lot of times people go into relationships, whether marriage, businesses, relationships, or friendships, then they have these set expectations they have in their mind that they first off don't communicate what their expectations mm -hmm. are. And then when the expectation is not met, which is all the time, they feel disappointed, they feel yeah. betrayed, they feel, you know, they feel hurt. And they feel hurt because they had a level of expectation mm -hmm. then that they wanted, but they didn't meet. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know there was an expectation. Mm -hmm. So then that's where there's a disconnect in the communication. And so that's where a lot of problems happen. Yeah. You yeah. didn't spend time with me yesterday. Dude, I was busy. You didn't tell me what I spent time yesterday. Yeah. And so it's like, but we, but, but a lot of people expect to have mm -hmm. this like brain communication where it's like, uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, tell, what is it? Tell, like, oh, tell, 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 whatever. <laughs> but pretty much they expect you to read minds. Yeah. And both sides, not just guys or girls, but both sides. And so it's about setting the proper expectations. If anything, don't set any expectations. Mm. So, so that that's one way that we talked about it was like don't expect anything from the other person, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm not saying I don't expect much from you, you know, not not like that kind of attitude, but more of like, you know what, you you do you, and I'm gonna love you for you, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna expect you for anything, yes, unless you asked. Now, if you asked, then okay, now let them give you a response. Mm. Don't expect the person to make a bed. If you want to make a bed, ask them, can you make the bed? Mm. But so many relationships will say, well, we're married, you live here, we expect to make the bed. Uh, okay. No, that doesn't work that way. You gotta speak out. Yeah. Make sense? For girls, for guys, my wife, my, my wife, my spouse isn't putting out as much. Well, the question is, are you communicating that? That's good. That's good. And so but they don't communicate that, so then they feel betrayed, they feel unappreciated. Mm -hmm. But there's that's where communication is so key. Yes. But when it comes yeah. to expectations, don't set expectations at all. That's yes. going to ruin your marriage, going to ruin your business partnerships, unless you ask. Be very clear on what you want and what, what it is you want them to do and what to expect. I love, mm. for us, she said straight up, do you want to keep doing these YouTubes? Yeah. Because I kept missing my appointments. <laughs> yeah. I kept missing my appointments, so she was just straight up, do you want to keep doing these YouTubes? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, because it messes with my, my schedule, which is very sporadic. <laughs> And so she was, she got disappointed. She was sad, yeah. but she, at least at least there's no more expectations of us meeting up every Monday at this time. But now she then she communicated. She then communicated. I really want us to do these YouTube lives. I really wanted yeah. to do these podcasts because it's great for my my our viewers and da And I said, okay. She she explained what she wanted. Okay, well let's meet halfway. Here's what I want. I don't want to plan it far in advance. Yeah. Reach out to me the day of and see. Hey, are you free at this time? And if I say yes. Pop the camera, let's go. Because that's pretty sporadic. Yes. <laughs> so in her mind, she could go ahead and plan it. This is what I'm going to ask him. But for me, ask me, like, hey, are you free right now at 2 o'clock? Great, let's go. <laughs> and that's where, th th that works out. That's why we're on here today. Yeah. It's because it was sporadic. Yeah, that's good compromising. <laughs> that's the key, compromising. <laughs> Making things work. 
Um, and yeah, that's absolutely true. I think it's so important to not um, have expectations. I remember I had uh, a fan say, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna go out and uh, pretty much cheat on his wife and they do not have a, an open communication. And I said, wait, wait, before you do that, why don't you talk to your wife? He, he explained he, she hasn't put out in like several years. Um, and I said, before you do that, why don't you just tell her how you feel? And so the next day he comes back into my camera room and says, pretty much, uh, guess what? Uh, I got laid today. And so they were able to communicate what they both wanted and she understood, yes, yeah, several years. Um, you know, I hear a lot of times that after a woman has a child, I don't really know because I haven't, we, ha we don't have kids yet, but I don't know what happens to the woman's body. I don't know if it's the woman loses their, their drive or they feel insecure or they're just so busy with um, their kids so they just forget. Um, I'm not really sure, but I am hearing that quite often, so I will have to do some more research. But um, he did tell me that he was able to express that to his wife the next day he got laid, and now they ha they come into agreement where she said she's going to be more aware to fulfill that in her husband. And I think that's so powerful to have that type of communication Ex instead of just expecting this is to happen and not communicate. And uh, maybe he would have went off, and they would maybe he would have get gotten caught, and then they ended up having a divorce. But having that type of communication is powerful and so key, and also constant forgiveness. <laughs> and uh, our last point I really want to talk about that I really feel like has been the biggest glue to our marriage is having a pretty much a, a mission statement. Yes. for our marriage um the times where we thought about getting a divorce where we wanted to leave this was a key that it's like our love like for me my love never really left it was just so, so, sometimes life just brings so much chaos or uh also there's marriages where love comes and goes sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not or you just feel like you're tired of each other or whatever obstacles come your way um, I would say our mission statements every time we came to a point like that was the key that helped made us not to get a, a divorce the D word um, and uh, you you got that from another member yeah um, so I heard it from some I forgot who I heard it from but they said pretty much the word is submit when you the Bible says wives submit to your husband and that's one of the things that a lot of guys say, well, how does my wife submit to me? My wife's not submitting to me. She's not submitting to me. She's not, she just doesn't have a submission. Well, here's the thing. Sub means submarine. That means go under. So sub, go under, submarine, sub, and then mission, submission. Mission means what's the vision and the goal of your relationship, of that, of your marriage, of your whatever. So if you want your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, to submit, come underneath the mission, they have to come under a mission. That's if good. there's no mission, mm -hmm. then there's no reason to, to really submit. So understand that aspect because there's got to be a vision for your life and a vision for your relationship, mm -hmm. a vision for your marriage for that to work. Yeah. Yeah. So our our vision is that has, has always been ministry-based. And um, <laughs> hey, Mr. Barricade, good to see you. Glad you're here. <laughs> um, our mission for our marriage has always revolved around uh, ministry. We met because of ministry, and it's always been ministry, and it's always been our mission to help as many people as we can. And so that's always right. been uh, the key goal of our, our marriage and this vision that we had, like this God-given vi vision uh, that we had for my husband and I. And so if we took away that vision, then it's like, where do you go next? Mm. Because here's the thing, and I say this quote all the time, without vision, people perish. Right. If you take away a vision, then you don't know where you're going. And then if you don't have a vision, you could die. And so that's scarier to me than, uh, 
then tr tr it, it's scarier and it's harder to restart over. Is it possible? So if you had a vision, I know I'm not trying to discourage anyone, if you had a vision taken away from you, that's okay. You can always regain the vision. But here's the thing, when you have a vision and you have the choice to um, either take away the vision or keep going, sometimes the vision is the very thing that keeps you so strong. So for us, our vision is so strong and so like prominent in our life that if we took away our vision, that would destroy us, I feel like, as individuals. Right. And so for our, for our marriage, we just feel like our vision is a key is a glue for keeping us to keep moving forward, to keeping us um, just the love and the spark that we have for each other. Um, so yeah, I would say those are the three keys. Do you want to add anything? No, that's no. great. She said it all. <laughs> so again, um, it's communication. It is constant forgiveness. And it's about having, um, just having a mission for your marriage. And if you're not married, then even a mission for your life to keep you going. That's huge. Yes. So uh, just real quick, do you guys have any questions before we log off? This is a perfect time. If you're like, any questions that you would have on this topic? If not, we'll see you guys next week. And if you're single out there and you're watching this, the best way to get the opposite sex to like you, love you, whatever, is for you to have a mission. Yes. Because when you have a mission, you're ambitious. And the opposite sex loves that. No mm. matter what, it, whether you're a female, male, having a mission in your life is vital and it's key. Yeah. So if you're just living and you're not, you know, there's so many people living, but who are dead. Because mm. you have to be living for a purpose. Live on purpose, y'all. Yes. And screw, what is your prayer request? Yes, awesome, Roy. Actually, that's... Um, What's your mission, Addicted? You're so funny. Uh, that's actually, when I first met my husband, he told me about his own uh, mission, or his mission was to go and start a church, plant a church, and just touch lives. And he started speaking into uh, the God-given dream that he had. And I would say that's probably one of the most attractive things about him was that he was so goal oriented he had a destination where he wanted to go with himself and i was ready to be a part of that and just come in agreement and so yes definitely if you don't that's a great word if you don't if you're single and you don't have a mission for your life create a mission really think about that you used to be obsessed with race driving and that doesn't bring home the bacon or the money <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> well, you could find out how it can bring home the bacon and the money. <laughs> yeah, people do make money off of that. You just never know. You slept on the racetrack always in driving classes or on the track training. <laughs> You're so funny. All right, you guys. Yes, that's what's up. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Roy. Thank you, Addicted. Thank you, Mr. Barricane. <laughs> shouldn't eat too much bacon yes awesome thank you so much you guys we will be doing some more youtube live spontaneously <laughs> all right guys all right. have a good night yes good night